You're listening to The Cultured Bumpkin, a literature podcast with Jake Phillips, where we present audiobook quality readings of the classics for your enjoyment. Thank you for stopping by. And remember, just because you're a bumpkin doesn't mean you can't be cultured. Hello and welcome to The Cultured Bumpkin. You know, I haven't posted much the last three weeks because... Uh, I went to my grandfather's, my grandparents' house to take care of my grandfather for about a week uh, in July. And then when I got back, loaded up the family and went to sort of out west, visited my sister, visited my sister in Oklahoma and uh, my adorable niece, Missy. Her husband was on a business trip with the old Marine Corps, and so I didn't get to see him. We had a lot of fun, but we had a lot of fun. Uh, After that, we went to Colorado to see some dear friends, and um, my two younger brothers are working at an an, uh, outfitter out there, and so we hung out in the mountains, uh, you know, of Colorado, about 9,000 feet or so, very thin air, but very cool. And not very human. So I couldn't breathe, but I liked it. And then uh, we headed up, sort of hit the edge of Utah, up into Wyoming. We went to Grand Teton, Yellowstone. Um, stayed in a, a TP Airbnb. That was interesting. A lot of fun. Great little site. If you, if you want to know where it was, send me a message. I'll tell you. And then... Um, we went to the battle of uh, the battlefield of Little Bighorn in Crow Agency, Montana. I love battlefields, and I'm a big. I was in the U.S. Cavalry, so I have that connection. But then I love the history of the American West, and that is, you know, the most iconic battle of of the American West, and one of the most romantic battles, if there be such a thing, in American history. I think because of the the lost cause element on the Native American side. They won handily, but, you know, that was like their last hurrah. After that, the U.S. government said, let's stop messing around with this. And they, you know, they had everybody on a reservation within, uh, within five years of that, the vast majority of uh, Native Americans were on reservations, forced reservations, of course, Nobody wanted to do that. And um, not to get political, but the U.S. government hasn't changed a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? Um, Anywho, another time, another place. We'll have that conversation perhaps. But anyway, a great battlefield. Then we we turned south. We went back down through northern Wyoming, stopped at uh, the historical site of Fort Phil Kearney. Then we... um, we hit two more little battlefields, Fetterman's Fight, which was the second largest defeat of the U.S. Cavalry in the American West, second only to Little Bighorn. Um, and then the Wagon Box Fight, which is just a few miles away, and it happened like the year later, but it was from each one of those battles involved soldiers from Fort Phil Kearney and then like uh, Lakota, Arapaho, and Cheyenne warriors in in each one of those. Crazy Horse was actually at the Wagon Box fight. And uh, then we came back down and stayed with some friends in Kansas. And then I saw an old Army buddy, also in Kansas. And then I saw another buddy in Kansas that just got engaged. And then we came on back through the night, got home few days ago. So it was a, a grand tour of the American West. We had a great time, tight quarters, drove the whole way with four kids. But we just had a, an amazing time. And if you can do that, you should. It's just, it was great. Um, I'm very thankful to be able to be a voice actor because that's, that's why I can do that because I can work on the road and I don't have to show up and punch a clock for somebody. You know, it's like, well, you know, I can hunker down in a teepee and do a do a recording if I have to, uh, do a little temporary setup and fill orders for clients and things like that if I if I need to. So I'm very thankful to be able to do that. And uh, 
you know, if you like this show and that sort of thing, there is a link in the show notes where you can, there's some ways you can support. You know, you can buy one of my books off of Audible, uh, certainly subscribe and review and tell your friends. That always helps. There's a uh, buy me a coffee link for uh, you can buy stuff on there or give a donation or whatever. Um, a lot of ways to support the Culture Bumpkin, and I appreciate each and every one of you that has done any of those things. Now, on to the poem. Oh, also, I'm going to try, you know, now I'm back home, I've, I'm not traveling. I, I don't think I'm going to be traveling uh, for the foreseeable future, for the next few months anyway. There might be a trip or two, but hopefully nothing crazy. So I want to, you know, put a lot more content out, put a lot more podcast episodes out. And so um, I'm going to try to do better. I'm not going to go weeks and, and months at a time like I have in the past. I'm going to be, be irregular. So today we're going to read something from Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Now, Elizabeth Barrett Browning lived from 1806 to 1861. She was one of 12 children. She was, she was British. She married Robert Browning, who is a, an incredible poet in his own right. Now, in this poem, it's called, If Thou Must Love Me. And it goes like this. If thou must love me, let it be for naught except for love's sake only. Do not say, I love her for her smile, her look, her way of speaking gently, for a trick of thought that falls in well with mine, and certes brought a sense of pleasant ease on such a day. For these things in themselves, beloved, may be changed, or change for thee, and love so wrought may be unwrought so. Neither love me for thine own dear pities wiping my cheeks dry. A creature might forget to weep who bore thy comfort long and lose thy love thereby. But love me for love's sake, that evermore thou mayest love on through love's eternity. Beautiful, If Thou Must Love Me by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Those are some wise words. You should rewind that and listen to it again. That was really good. <laughs> I really appreciate you listening. Each and every person that uh, listens that, you know, when I see them in person, they say, hey, I appreciate your, what I like that podcast or whatever, that episode. The messages I get on social media, the emails, I really appreciate those. I don't think you realize that. I, I really do thank you for your uh, support and just your encouragement. I um, always enjoy hearing from you. I hope you have a wonderful day. And thank you very much for listening. You've been listening to The Cultured Bumpkin, a literature podcast with Jake Phillips. Thank you very much for listening. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, would you mind going and subscribing and leaving a nice review on whatever podcast platform podcast platform you heard this on. I would really appreciate it. Thank you very much for listening and we'll see you next time.